the Adelaide department for 10 years was easily the most exciting uh, department in Australia. Uh, and we had this very young professor, Peter Carmel, who's quite a terribly clever man, who'd been to Trinity, but, but had been through Melbourne with Eric. They were contemporaries in, uh, in Melbourne. Uh, and uh, it was just such a happy time. Uh, and so very fruitful, very productive. Uh, so uh, we just had a most wonderful time. And I taught Joan Robinson. And I also taught a course to the intending honours students in the fourth year. Uh, for, for, honours was in the fourth year, but you had a subject called economic theory, which was interim honours. And I said, well, look, instead of doing an encyclopedia course, we're going to just concentrate on Nicky Cowdor and his post-war work and see how a great economist thinks. And so I gave these lectures to a class of about five or six very bright young people. And we, between us, we developed a critique of Nicky's models of distribution and growth, which we couldn't completely understand. I don't think Nicky did, <laughs> as a matter of fact. And that led, uh, because what my PhD had been about partly was um, what are the interrelationships between firms' behaviour on the one hand and systemic behaviour on the other? And in particular, I've made it a case study of what happens if you use um, uh, historical cost procedures for setting prices and uh, measuring income for dividends and tax purposes at a period of inflation. That's what my immediate uh, uh, problem was. But to answer it, I looked at relationships between individual behaviour and systemic behaviour. And so we investigated, saying, well, in Nicky's macro theory or Keynesian theory of distribution, what uh, firm behaviour is he assuming in the consumption goods sector and the investment goods sector, uh, especially as he assumes, uh, you know, this is this very eminent Keynesian, he was arguing that a capitalist economy in the long term must be at full employment, which led Samuelson to call him Jean-Baptiste Caldor, you know, after <laughs> J.B. Say. Uh, uh, and so we worked out well, I must say it was, a, it was a communal effort, but I did most of the, uh, the work. We worked out what the behaviour would have to be in the two sectors for this to come about, because it was very peculiar. And so I wrote a, a paper called A Critique of Mr. Caldor's Theory of Distribution and Growth, which uh, I sent to uh, Nicky, uh, and though he, of course, he, <laughs> Nicky's a very shrewd bloke, but he said, well, you, you've got something there on... I don't agree with you, but you've got something there on what I've said in publications. I sent it to the Review of Economic Studies where his original distribution paper was published, but the editors wouldn't have any of it. And then after a month, a uh, year of mucking around, they said, yeah, away, away. So I published it in Australian Economic Papers just before I came back to Cambridge in 63 for a year study leave. Uh, 